Good Friday, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Conversation Daily News. Glad you all could join us today. Of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Friday. We have a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By, and in today's entertainment spotlight, you can be part of my conversation with actress and recording artist Rachel McFarlane discussing her extraordinary journey, as well as the show American Dad on TBS. You don't want to miss that. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Friday headlines in national news. Floods trap many in Florida as Ian heads to South Carolina. Rescue crews piloted boats and waded through inundated streets on Thursday to save thousands of Floridians trapped amid flooded homes and shattered buildings left by Hurricane Ian, which crossed into the Atlantic Ocean and churned towards South Carolina. Hours after weakening to a tropical storm while crossing the Florida Peninsula, Ian regained hurricane strength on Thursday evening over the Atlantic. The National Hurricane Center predicted it would hit South Carolina as a Category 1 hurricane today. The devastation inflicted on Florida came into focus a day after Ian struck as a monstrous Category 4 hurricane, one of the strongest storms ever to hit the U.S. It flooded homes on both the state's coast, cut off the only road access to a barrier island, destroyed a historic waterfront pier, and knocked out electricity to 2.67 million Florida homes and businesses nearly a quarter of utility customers. At least one man was confirmed dead in Florida at the time of this report, while three other people were reported killed in Cuba after the hurricane struck the island Tuesday. Area folders from the Fort Myers area, a few miles west of where Ian struck land, showed homes ripped from their slabs and deposited among shredded wreckage. Businesses near the beach were completely razed, leaving twisted debris. Broken docks floated at odd angles beside damaged boats and fires smoldered on lots where houses once stood. The hurricane tore through the park of about 60 homes, many of them destroyed or mangled beyond repair. The road into Fort Myers was littered with broken trees, boat trailers, and other debris. Cars were left abandoned in the road, having stalled when the storm surge flooded their engines. After leaving Florida as a tropical storm Thursday and entering the Atlantic Ocean north of Cape Canaveral, Ian spun up into a hurricane again with winds of 75 miles per hour. More national news. January 6th chairman says Jenny Thomas reiterated false election claims. Virginia Jenny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, stood by the false claim that the 2020 election was fraudulent during an interview Thursday with the January committee investigating the January 6th insurrection, the panel chairman said. It's a work in progress, Representative Benny Thompson told reporters after the more than four-hour interview ended. At this point, we're glad she came. The committee, comprised of seven Democrats and two Republicans, has for months sought an interview with Thomas in an effort to know more about her role in trying to help former President Donald Trump overturn his election defeat. The conservative activist texted with White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and contacted lawmakers in Arizona and Wisconsin in the weeks after the election. Thomas answered some of the questions from congressional investigators on Thursday as she sought to portray herself as among the many Americans who still believe the baseless claim that the 2020 election was stolen, according to a person familiar with the investigation who was not authorized to discuss it publicly. But she did not provide any evidence or a specific reasoning to back up her belief, the person said. As she has said from the outset, Mrs. Thomas has significant concerns about fraud and irregularities in the 2020 election, her attorney said in a statement. And as she told the committee, her minimum and mainstream activity focused on ensuring that reports of fraud and irregularities were being investigated. In more national news, Senate passed a stopgap bill to avert shutdown and aid Ukraine. The Senate passed a short-term spending bill on Thursday that would avert a partial government shutdown when the fiscal year ends at midnight on Friday and provide another infusion of military and economic aid to Ukraine as it seeks to repel Russia's brutal invasion. The bill finances the federal government through December 16th and buys lawmakers more time to agree on legislation setting spending levels for the 2023 fiscal year. It passed by a vote of 72 to 25 and now goes to the House for consideration All of the no votes came from Republicans. As has become routine since the Associated Press, lawmakers waited until the final hours before the shutdown deadline to act. The passage of a bill to fund the government was hardly in doubt, particularly after Democrat Senator Joe Manchin agreed to drop provisions designed to streamline the permitting process for energy projects and greenlight the approval of a pipeline in his home state of West Virginia. And finally, in business news, Wall Street drops back to lowest level since 2020 as fear returns. Stocks fell broadly on Wall Street Thursday as worries about a possible recession and rising bond yields 
put the squeeze back on markets. The S&P 500 fell 2.1%, reaching its lowest level since late 2020. The watchout erased the index's gains in a big rally the day before. That's when forceful moves by the Bank of England to get suddenly spiking UK yields under control led to a global burst of relief among investors. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 1.5%, and the Nasdaq Composite lost 2.8%. The Russell 2000 Index of smaller companies dropped 2.4%. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for a message from my book, Word That Choose to Live By. Enjoy. Good Friday, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Word That Choose to Live By. Though the world might be full of darkness, if you let your light shine and inspire others to do the same, you can turn what seems like a bad situation around. Now let's get to it. Have an amazing Friday and enjoy your weekend. Rachel McFarlane is featured in today's Entertainment Spotlight. We're here on Conversation Daddy News. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Actress and recording artist Rachel McFarlane joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about her extraordinary success and the show American Dad on TBS. Here's a bit of our conversation. Well, look, first of all, congratulations on the on this season of American Dad. I mean, this show has been one of those things, I think, that gets people laughing and talking. Rachel, what has that experience been like for you to be a part of this this family uh, of actors that, that helped to bring this, this show to life? It's been a remarkable two decades, almost 18 years of making this show. Um, it's such a unique opportunity because most shows obviously don't go that long. So um, to grow with a cast the way that, that we have been able to has been really um, quite incredible. And, you know, I'm, I'm um, active on social media. And to get feedback from our fans um, who let us know what the show means to us in terms of, um, you know, one of the, the best comments that we get are when people say, you know, American Dad got me through a really tough time or yeah. when I'm, um, you know, in a bad mood or if I just need to feel comforted or reassured, I just put these shows on and they just make me feel good. That's the best thing you can possibly hear, that we're actually, you know, helping people out and bringing some joy into people's lives with these shows that we love to make so much. Yeah. And Rachel, you've been able to do that in different aspects of your career. I mentioned some of the ways people have gotten to know you, whether it's the books or the music. What has that been like for you to be able to, to live daily and to, and to do things that do bring you so much joy? I feel incredibly privileged that this is, you know, what I get to do every day, do something that I really love. And, you know, the, the books are one of the most meaningful parts of my career, I think, because you know, they were inspired by my own children. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning into this edition of Conversations Daily News. We'll be back to you guys on Monday with more news, message from my book, Word That Choose to Live By, and of course, the Entertainment Spotlight. And until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today, and let's go make it a great one.